Hello everyone, this is your host, Gemma Putty, bringing health and wellness conversations from North Idaho and across this region. I'm so excited to chat with entrepreneurs, creatives, and believers as we journey together to connect more deeply to ourselves, our earth, and our communities. Cheers to shining bright and supporting local. Hello everyone, this is your host, Gemma Putty. For this interview, I get to talk with Donna Mills of Human Well Integrative Healing. I was introduced to Donna by a few people, but more recently by Dr. Benita, who I got to interview in episode 16. So I've been seeking a masseuse and healer that can talk about massage and include energetic work for ever and ever, honestly. And then I found Donna and last week I got to have the most amazing massage from her where she was doing reflexology and talking to me about chakras and breath work and my inner sovereignty. And it was the most amazing experience. So I'm so thankful that Donna agreed to join me today and talk a little bit more about her gifts that she's shining to the world. So thanks Donna for joining me. Oh, thanks Jim. And that was so lovely and kind. Thank you for that reflection. My absolute pleasure, honestly. (laughs) So as we dive in, I mean, I know you've got a complex story, but what is your, first of all, your elevator pitch of what you do? So if someone's like, Donna, we're in a coffee shop. What do you do? How do you answer them? Um, The short version is I remind people of who they were or are before they were flesh. And I do that through a um, somatic experience, through a psychological, spiritual, somatic, soma, meaning the body. So felt sense experience and a bit of medicine. Perfect. So you have studied a lot of different modalities to bring your work into now where I really think it's something that I didn't know existed. I craved it. I knew I craved it, but I didn't know it existed. And I wasn't quite sure. Of course, I never experienced your way of doing it. So I'm curious, what modalities have you discovered and even experiences that you've had that have created this art form, as I call it, healing form that you use right now? Oh, wow. It's been a 25 year experience and path. And I, so I started out going to massage school in Seattle in in the late nineties. And um, when I was going through massage school, they had an optional fifth term program that was built around three different modalities. You could go through the oncology program. You could go through the, which is working in the hospitals with people that have cancer and helping the central nervous system, doing massage to help people through those trying times and also sports medicine. And then they had an essential oil training um, and spa therapies. And I wanted to travel the world. I grew up in San Diego and I, um, I was in San Diego for 32 years. Like I had never really gone anywhere else except this little beach community, which is now a huge metropolis. And so, (laughs) so I wanted to get on a ship and, um, I wanted to go like in a cruise ship and do massage. Uh, but I had a young child at the time. And I realized that those kinds of places where you work have you on a pretty long, strict schedule. And and I realized that wasn't going to work for a single mom. So, um, but I did the training in essential oil anyways. And naturally my massage career moved towards athletes. They just, I just seemed to attract athletes. And so I ended up working for the San Diego chargers for a number of years and other uh, runners, runners a lot athletes. And so through that, I had these experiences of when I put my hands on people, I'm feeling this, Um, energetic, uh, what I can call now, what I didn't know what the term was then, but just this energy moving as and through me. And there were times where I felt like I could literally come out of my body and, and, and leave my consciousness or go somewhere outside of my body. And then what would happen? I'd have this athlete on the table and I'm gone and my body's still here and what's going on. Right. So I would push energy away. Like that's not the work I'm doing right now. I push energy away. And, um, Throughout this career of mine, you know, I've done lymphatic massage and I've done sports medicine and I've done, I I have taught massage in different um, places and all of the uh, science classes and 
um, shiatsu. Um, and, and so, yeah, I've gone through so many different modalities over the last 25 years of doing massage. But what's interesting is coming back around this energy work has always been swirling around and I've always said no. And then I took um, a Reiki course oh, yes. probably in the last three years uh, with my friend Cammie over in Montana. She's amazing. And I did Reiki one and two with her and I realized it was like, oh, this is what I've been doing all these years. Yeah. But I didn't have a name for it. And I, although I'm Reiki trained, I don't consider myself a Reiki. I don't, haven't done the master level and I don't consider myself a Reiki practitioner. I just now understand through my Reiki training what I've always been doing. Right. And so at that point I realized it's time it's time to let it in. And so I've been working specifically with energy work and the lymphatics, the fascia system, joints, and mobilization. And I realized I don't have to work on the muscles anymore because when I am releasing the energy, the fascia softens, the ligaments soften, the joints soften, and then the muscles finally soften. And it's not that I don't touch them. It's just not my focus. It's really on where, where's the release need to be. Yeah, I love that. Because I mean, when we, we had my massage last week, I mean, you spent the bulk of the time on my feet. And I mean, you were kind of referring to reflexology, obviously, finding those pressure points, or I'm probably not describing it right, but in the feet that connect to other organs and areas of the body. And it wasn't about needing all the mus muscles all over my body it was and I was feeling triggers is too harsh of a word but I was feeling like needs for release just from you working on my feet and um did was ref reflexology something that you studied or is that just kind of integrated into the other like massage trainings that you've taken throughout your journey Oh, I did learn some of it when I was in massage school. And then here and there, you know, I've just continued my own education. I am a <laughs> librarian. I have my own library. <laughs> I love it. I was going to say something about book, whatever, whatever. But I was like, no, I'm going to call myself a librarian. <laughs> so I, I have tons of books. I went through a new Whole Foods nutrition course as well. So like my bookshelves look like massage books, nutrition books, and then I have an undergrad degree in small farms and food systems because my nutrition taught me that let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. And I thought, okay, where's my food coming from? Which led me down looking at our food systems and through small farms and food systems. And that's Which what I- Hippocrates was the one that said that, right? Like a bazillion years ago. It's so a I, student farm. Yeah. Right? So it's funny too. Almost like I keep saying the pendulum is swinging in multiple capacities. And obviously that's a very large pendulum that's going back from Hippocrates time, but we come into, especially the Western world. And there's a lot of stories and framework set up that aren't necessarily the healthiest for our bodies. Right. So we're born into that. And then it's finding out that we don't find our answers outside. We find them inside and we find them with simplicity of, real food and that comes from the earth and from the trees and it's like coming back to being like oh this all needs to be pretty simple as far as going inside of our answers and just getting food that doesn't have packaging and isn't like you're not even trying to decipher the nutrition contents because it's just an apple or it's just some beef from the cow that ate grass and you know it's so I think I I feel the same way about the journey of each step kind of leads to another step of just simplifying and cleaning up but coming back to just how nature intended us to be and the planet to be and our food to be right yeah, there's, there's this pondering that I have about like, okay, life, what is life about, right? And so if we go back around to what do I do, I remind people of who they were before they were flesh. Yeah. That is, can you even contemplate that conversation with yourself? Can you even contemplate like, if, if we know through physics that energy never dis dissipates or ceases, right? You can't create nor, nor destroy energy, then there was an intelligence there's an intelligence that is uh, innate in that energy, right? Like at some point beyond science, when there was fertilization between an egg and a sperm creating a human, there had to be a third element of consciousness to come into that. 
Right. Like it's the consciousness that's beyond the science between, you know, what is it, mitosis, when the, when the egg splits, right, mm-hmm. and, and life begins. Uh, yeah. That requires a consciousness. And so I call that the intelligence that lives as and through us, no matter whether we're flesh or not, right? It's what came in with us as we manifested into flesh. Right. And is what will exist of us once this fleshly existence is passes, right? Is complete, is complete. I really like the word complete yes. because complete is, um, it just is, right? It's, it's neutral. It's not like, oh, we died. Well, it's like, yeah, okay, because we are going to die. Right. Like, yes. That's just it. Just because the fact that we don't have a conversation or an ease and a grace about death right now, that we don't have this cyclical, Um, what I would call more pagan outlook on the world, which just means the us that's in alignment with the us that is part of this earth, right? It's like my bones and my blood and my flesh are of this earth. It feeds me and it homes me and it recreates me and it, and it houses me and it keeps me safe and fun. And, and wow, what a glorious place to be able to live out the incarnation of whoever and whatever energy I was before I was flesh. I'm like, it's like playtime, right? <laughs> oh my God, I'm just, I'm, oh, here I am. And yeah. here's, here's what I get to play in, right? Yeah, so sure. remembering that as when, when you can actually have that acknowledgement while we're in this fleshly body mm-hmm. and going, oh, I get it. I get it. My, it's that circling back around to what is good for me is remembering what's in my body, trusting my body. We have so many religious paradigms that tell us not to trust our body, but it's like, are you joking? Because this is where spirit, power, God, whatever you believe in, if you don't believe in a higher power, whatever the energy is that is as you, was you, is you, will continue to be you, right? Mm-hmm. Like, wow, that really kind of opens it up to like, what is my purpose here on life? It's to remember who I was so I can actualize that while I'm here. Right, the human right. experience, right? It yeah. happens, and that happens through the body, right? It's like where spirituality meets this human experience. And so when people are on my table, I am hearing where their body is asking to be released. I'm not going into the body to say, okay, I'm here to give you a massage. I'm not here to give you a massage. I'm here to put my hands on you and hear your body and respond to what it's asking for. And you also like, I love the piece where you were like sharing some of those intuitive like thoughts that you were getting because it was, it was helping me reflect and connect and ponder. Oh, what is she finding? What am I missing? What am I not listening to within my own body? And I quite often have thought, especially in the last few years, as I've been on this journey of like inner work and self-discovery, that even when I've had massages and having massage from someone that isn't able to consciously talk about energy or, but don't you, do you feel like even a masseuse that isn't able to talk about that is still somehow affecting the person's energy that they are massaging? Do you, what is your thought on that? Well, absolutely. I think all the times that I was either conscious of, of energy coming in and I pushed it away consciously said, no, thank you. I, I knew it was there, right? I'm pushing it away. It's, it, I'm pushing it away from my own consciousness. It's not like it's not there. It's right. always there. The minute, I mean, one of the greatest things that I remember from massage school is in my very first semester, in my very first, might have even been the first day of massage school, I had the kindest, sweetest intro to massage teacher named Susie. Mm-hmm. And she had this device that was, I don't know, maybe about this long and it was tube and it had some kind of, um, I don't know, Thomas Edison thing going on inside of it, right? It had some kind of kinetic energy, something. So Susie holds it and we're all in a circle and she, she grabs the person to the right and I'm, I'm directly to her left. So as it comes around, everybody grabs hands. And the last hand was that I took was the person to my left. And I took Susie's, I took the other hand of this device or the other end of the device. She was holding one. And when all of us linked, it lit up. Wow. It lit up. There's no electricity, right? That was, that's the energy and the electricity that moves as and through us. It's always there. So And at some level, I think anybody that goes into massage that puts their hands on another person has care and compassion and the understanding that why do you go into massage if not to be in service of humanity and wellness and healing? Yeah. 
No, I love that. I think it was, it was refreshing to me to find someone that was, I think energy is a beautiful thing, right? But it's, it was refreshing for me to find you who could talk and be aware of that too, because I think, I don't know that, like you said, Mrs. have generally very positive intentions, but I just love the piece of you, the intentionality and the consciousness of, oh, you're, you've obviously got something going on with your sacral chakra. There's like something here I can feel, or I can, that to me was that like added piece of nurturing to help me understand what's happening in my body. Cause so often I've been to masseuses and they're like, they don't say anything, which I also kind of like, you know, like, okay, I'm just zoned out and relaxing. This feels great. But I leave and I don't know how to live any better. Whereas I left you and I had a light into some things that I was thinking about to improve. So the next time I come back and see you, I'm not in the same place that I was before. Whereas I've left other people and it's like, well, I'll be back in a couple of months because I'm sure my shoulders will be tight again because I haven't like stopped to consciously think about what's causing that. So Thank you for that reflection. That's beautiful because my intent is to work myself out of a job. <laughs> it's like, really, I could be doing some gardening. I could be hiking. I could be doing, my intent is to work myself out of a job. And what I do is like, I consider myself a trauma and grief practitioner. You know, I'm, hel- I'm, I'm here to be in service of, it's like, oh, I'm helping. I don't, mm, I'm here to be in service of what needs to move. And what you're talking about is presencing. So even like circling back to the reflexology, when I'm holding somebody's foot, that is like a microphone to my knowing, right? It's like, oh, hey, hey, what's up foot? <laughs> right, it's like a microphone to my knowing. It's where my communication starts with your body. Right. And maybe it is something magic about the foot or mystical about the foot and, and the hands, right? And the same, it's the, the reflex points for me are the place where energy can escape, right? right? So there's four places on the body where I feel that that energy can escape. And it's the hands, the feet, the crown, and the perineum. And I do work, I'm going to use the word intimately, not to be confused with sexually. Intimately with the womb space, the pelvic bowl on both men and women, um, not the perineum, but in the area between where uh, the leg and the glutes and the hip and the pubic bone, there's so much pain and trauma in this world from sexual inappropriateness, mm-hmm. right? That, that people hold in this second chakra energy. So that is an imperative area to work on people to help move the energy. You know, I think when I, when I talk about working with fascia, uh, I talk about it like if you had a dinner plate size um, spider web, right? So fascia is like a matrix in your body. Mm-hmm. And so if we think about it in the context of a spider web that looks like a dinner plate, right? It's a perfect little spider web, it's like Charlotte's web, whatever. And um, if I want to have an effect around the whole outside or the wholeness of that spider web, I just stick my finger in the middle, right? And give it a little wiggle and the entire spider web would move. Right, right. Now take that out and apply it to the human body. The center of the spider web is the pelvic bowl, right? So anything that's being constricted, anything that's pulling down in the pelvic bowl, all the ways that we have as men and women been unsafe in our own sexuality, Mm -hmm. our own sensuality, sensing, sensing that doesn't have to do with sexuality, our own sensing what is in our body. Right. There's so much in our minds and so unbodied. Yeah. And not, not everywhere. I mean, people are, you know, we talk about being aw- awakened, you know, and or people that aren't awake yet, or also those that are not just awake, but rising, right? Rising. So yeah, you can awaken and know, know what's, oh, but also going further, you know, further, not just love and light, but understanding that the life is, is both the yin and the yang that, and so anyways, yeah, I'm kind of going around circles with myself, but um, it just kind of comes back to that uh, listening. Mm-hmm. And, and, and yes, like I said, I do want to work myself out of a job because I crave wellness for a really wounded world. I'm not at the top of some pyramid saying, oh, I know how to do this. I'm part of the round table, shoulder to shoulder with other people. 
Right. This is just the way that I'm putting my cards on the table or here's my bag of gold and your bag of gold is still your bag of gold, even though it looks different. Right. So. Well, and I think even it's with life coaching too, we talked about it a little bit, but we're, it's more like we're the facilitators because each of us have our own answers inside of ourselves. Like you don't know my answers. You can be the facilitator of me listening and tuning into my own answers with my own body. Mm-hmm. So it's, facilitating people to find that within themselves so that they can be empowered and go on without us. <laughs> like that's the goal, right? That yeah. Is spot right on. Cause I'm no longer the healer. I, I know I am, I am not the healer. I am the medicine woman. I have a bag of medicine and skills that I've cultivated um, that I can assist you with. And like you said, facilitate. So when we're going on a journey together, it's like hiking, like you've got your pack and that's all your stuff that you need that you're working on. Right. I don't know if it's wounds or if it's challenges or if it's this out or the other, but you've got your stuff in your backpack and I've got my medicine in my backpack and we're going on a hike together. Like I'm not here to heal you, but I'm here to hold space and to offer you X, Y, and Z medicine so that you can, you find your own, right? This is an inside job. Right. And they say that, right? It's like all the cliches about everything you need <laughs> inside of you. I'm like, oh my God. Like yeah. they're so, they're so <laughs> when you get to that and you know that you're like, ah, oh, they've been trying to tell me that for a few years, right? Like, okay, I got it now. <laughs> yeah, but I'm stubborn. I'm sure you're stubborn too, that I'm like, I'll figure this out by myself. Like I have to go through the pain myself to figure out that it's all cliches and I should have just listened to them in the first place. <laughs> that stubborn person anymore. I'm like, okay, I'll have all my lessons in ease and grace. <laughs> thank you. I got to 55 years and I'm like, no, thank you on the lessons that come with pain and dis- right. I got you. I'll take it in ease and grace. No, thank you. And thank you. Right. Gratitude, gratitude, uh, gratitude and choice are two really underutilized elements and they're free. Right. I'm all choice. Right. What do you choose for yourself? Right. What do you choose? Not what does society choose and not even what does society choose for you? Mm-hmm. Right? Where's your timing? Where's your knowing? And, and that's it. Like right now on this planet, we're in a, we're in a, um, a shift energetically. We just moved from earth energy into air energy and it's time for expansion. Think about the difference between earth energy, which is like, hey, build it, do it, think it, decide it. But air energy is like, what else is possible? And what's next? And and can I receive that instead of having to go and search for it? Can I just be here knowing that, it, that everything I need is already here? Yeah. I don't have the sight yet. So what do I need to open to move into that next space that you were talking about when you left my office? It's like, oh, yeah, I want to give people the, uh, the mirror, right? Like I'm, I'm a witness right. to who you already are and where you're already going. And I'll tell you what, I'll, I have found that the people that make the most impactful change already know they're on this journey of change or shift or evolution. It's not like you have to let go of who you were. It's the, what's the next best step of me. Right. Right? And so, yeah, yeah, when you're on that path, everything becomes a confirmation. Everything becomes a witness. Everything is like, yes, that direction. Yes, that direction. Yes. Keep going that way. Right. Right rarely ever find anything we need by looking outside. We have to come to our own realization and then see all the yeses around you. Mm -hmm. And be open to it and receiving. And that's what I've found constantly is that I get in my very, like, I've got a plan and I'm doing this. And then I'm like burnt out and not sleeping and blah, 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 blah. And then it's like open and just be receiving to listen and for the guidance and it takes a lot right it sounds very hippy dippy but it's like whether it's like thoughts dropping in or like the feelings or just that inner knowing of what your next step is it's not about us tackling life by ourselves listening from inside it's about us experiencing life from being guided from inside but going with flow like it doesn't need to be a constant tackling of things 
I didn't say that very well, but you, you kind of were on the same page. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It feels like the scientific method, right? Like you come up with a hypothesis, right. uh, you've got a, you've got a, uh, a question, right? It's like, oh, do I go left? Do I go right? Right? Like, uh, do I do this in my life? Do I do that in my life? Uh, you, you get this hypothesis of like, okay, if I go this way, or if I go that way, um, this will happen and that will happen. Like you, I got to tell you, I don't know if this is true for you, but growing up, I would have this voice in my head. That's like, I would make a decision. The voice would say no. And I would do it anyways. <laughs> Still and sometimes. I, yeah. I, I would do it anyways. Oh, never for me anymore. Like I listened to that voice because at one point I decided, Hey, I knew that was going to happen. Why did I shank myself that way? Right. It's like, <laughs> I did that to myself because I knew. <laughs> but we're not trusted. We're not taught to trust the knowing. And right. this is it. It's like, can I trust myself enough right. to block out the stories of right. society? Right. What is true, right? Can I define truth for myself? Can I trust myself enough to be in the unknowing, right? right. Like, can I go through the uncomfortable part of the process to get to the beautiful part of the outcome? Right. And I'm so much in the beautiful part of the outcome right now. I'm like, I, uh, I know what I know and I know nothing, right? It's like, okay, God, show me, right? Like I know nothing uh, because I've got to this point where last year for me was a complete and utter implosion of who I was from zero to 54. And it's like, okay, Donna Mills, all that is gone. Right. Like keep wisdom, the gyms, whatever you are, who you are, you've oh. made it here. It doesn't mean that none of that matters. It means put it on the shelf. Now, who are you? Right. No, I love that because we've talked about this a couple of times and it was like 2020 broke down everything, shattered things, pulled it apart, right? Like we've talked about this and now it's like you said 2021. I'd actually love to hear you talk about it. Like 2021 is the process of piecing things back together and figuring how it goes back together as the new version of ourselves as the world. Right. Yeah. Who are you now? Right. And guess what? We saw last, we saw last year that we could break all the rules. Yeah. Right. That those stories aren't necessarily true. Right. That's like right. question the stories because sometimes they can all fall apart. And then what are you left with? How are right. you going to pick up the pieces and rewrite the story to align with what you actually think and feel, feel inner feeling that it should be, right. that it Absolutely. wants to be, you know? Yeah. And, and actually we don't have to write the story. We're living the story every single day. And we're, a, we're an exploration of, wow, what else is possible? Right. What else can I do? You know, it's like, oh, home offices. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I can do this and that actually, yeah. or, or, you know, I actually don't have to work 40 hours a week because I can get my work done in 25 hours a week and have 15 more hours of quality time. Or, or actually I can work 40 hours a week and not have to work 75 because that's insane, <laughs> right. Whatever, whatever it looks like. Yeah. The question is what else is possible? Right. No. And, and how do we break down all of the beliefs that were or were not true? Right. No, for sure. who are we, you know, it's like, that's how do we human? Well, that's the name of my business, human. Yeah. Well, right. Like how do we human? Well, how do we get this right? Cause we have got some of it, right. But clearly we have not got it all right. And if we don't ask ourselves that, how do we human? Well, how do we get this right? Because we don't have to stay stuck in that old paradigm anymore. Right. I mean, when I talk about us moving from earth energy to air energy, that happened December, 2020 months ago, just a few months ago. Right. right. It's like 2020 came in, the pandemic came in, it twisted us like a, took a little aluminum can and went, now yeah. what are you going to be? Right now, what are you going to be? And, um, or, or took our pot of basil and like dumped it over and it's like, Oh, <laughs> like compost now right looks like compost so what do we need to compost it's not even about making what we've done or who we've been wrong it's like we've done what we've done as human beings and and, and cultures to now what can we take that is advantageous and beneficial to the we because it's not a me it's a me game and a we game simultaneously and the reason it's a me game and a we game simultaneously is because the work is ours. Like we were talking about, like all the work is ours. The, 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 she took one last step and she was home inside. 
inside, right? She went inside and then she was home or he or they or whatever, right? So that it's, it's the self-centering, right? We use this word self-centered wrong. Self-absorbent is what you're talking about when you say somebody is self-centered, but to be centered if within yourself and to know who you are, why you're here and how you're walking on this earth, that is self-centered. That is harmony. That's resonance between whatever heaven and earth is for you, right? It's like, oh, not only do I remember who I was before I was flesh, but I'm also now in harmony and resonance with that. And I can walk in my earthly earth walk here in ease and grace and joy and peace. And that's where peace comes from. A most profound experience I had last year in the midst of losing my own mind and going through what I call madness. I had a moment of the most profound peace that I went, oh, is this what's coming? Awesome. They're going to love this. That's all I could think about was humanity. Like, oh, they're going to love this. This is, yeah, just imagine, bring into your cells um, the most reverent thing you can feel since. Like, what would true peace be like for us? I had a flash of that last year and it was like, wow. yeah, okay. This is why I stand on this, stay on this planet. This is why I stay on this planet because I know all the collective work that you do, that I do, that Bonita does, that all of us, so many people, there are so many people, there are more people on this planet doing work in the benevolent way for the we. Right. They know who they are. Right. The we, then we actually know about, right? You connecting people yeah. on this podcast. Yeah. Um, the work I do at the Charter for Compassion um, or any of the other civic engagement work that I do, right. I'm seeing people everywhere aligning right. to who they are. And it's glorious. I am heartened. And last year when I didn't want anything to do with this planet and all I wanted to do was dip out of here, right. the, the joy, the kindness, the gift of staying is the sight of those I know doing the same work. Well, and it's, our world is so 24 hour news cycle. Like we're very focused on negativity, right? Like that's kind of the norm. But then when you start, to, there's multiple people that you start to open your eyes to this whole other world of people that are just loving and doing work from their heart, whatever it is. And then you see more of it and you see more of it and you connect with more people that are thinking the same way where they're like, forget all of like these negative stories. Yes, I don't want to ignore the pain that is existing in the world, but can we focus on the positive, especially those of us that aren't needing to peel from that pain right there. So, right. It's just refocusing on where you're going and what you're trying to bring to the world, I think is where I've just constantly found hope and faith and take the next step. And then I'm building this community here, right in my like neighborhood of people that are doing the same thing and hopeful and excited. And, and it's just, it's been really fun to connect with people. You just realize that there's a lot of us trying to serve our purpose, however you want to say it. So yeah. Lighthouses, right? Yeah. Lighthouses. Right. lighthouses. The only job for the lighthouse is to shine its light out. Yes. Keep the inside tidy and yeah. shine that out. Right. right. The lighthouse doesn't pick up its little lighthouse skirt and go dipping out into the harbor looking for ships. It sits there and it does its thing, right? In right. all of its lighthouse glory. And then the ships come, right? And that's what's happening. It's like, oh, actually those ships are other lighthouses, right? Because the fog is, is rising. And we, what we thought we were looking out into the harbor to see other ships, like, yeah, ships come and that's great. And they learn and then they, they evolve into a lighthouse or, or what, have, what have, they were always a lighthouse, you know, it's like, whatever. We're already whole and holy. Right. What's happening is we're, we're recognizing that we're already whole and holy. And the stories, the gaslighting stories of, Mm, sin or imperfection or it's like you know be all you can be army navy marines type of things but then you go to church on sunday and you're called a sinner and it's like well which is it you know we you, like you said we can focus on the negative and 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 the the brokenness of the story or we can remember who we are 
We can remember who we are and what our capacity is and our capabilities. And then like remembering who we were before we were flesh or even just questioning, what am I doing on this planet? Right. right. If you start with that question, what the hell am I doing here? Right. <laughs> and then therein lies the answers start coming. Cause when you start asking the answers start coming and you know, you, t- you talked about the negativity. It's like, there's a, the knowing that, mm, what I send my energy to grows. So if I send my energy to hatefulness or separation or, or dis-ease or violence or the news, like you, you mentioned the news. I'm like, oh my God, does that still exist? People watch that? I never watch TV. <laughs> so, I mean, I might watch a show on Netflix or so, you know, have a movie night, but I'm like, whoa, do people still watch TV? Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. I'm really on the fringe, right? Um, But yeah, so where my energy goes. And that's why I think that like every time I turn around, I'm meeting somebody like you. I'm meeting somebody who's a mirror image of myself Mm -hmm. in their own individuality. But it's like, when I know who I am as the incarnation of something mystic and magical and vast as a soul is, then I can't look at you as anything less. Right. I know. I don't believe in separation anymore. There is nothing. If there is something that's that I feel I'm separated from, it's a it's an illusion. Right. It's an illusion. And you know, Buckminster Fuller uh, is a brilliant um, thought person in, in, in the 50s and, be, and before that. And he has this quote that I love. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete, right? So that's me not even dipping into the old paradigms and the stories of, uh, it's like, this is just kind of winding us up. Right. It's like, yeah. winding us up and like, and traumatizing people. And yes, I see the trauma. This is the work I do with people. And so reminding them of who they were before they were flesh is my way of saying, Hey, that's not a story you have to believe. Yeah. Don't well, believe- and that's a good point is that you do massage, but you also use other, you've got courses, you teach yoga, you have other ways that you go about shining your light. Would you kind of talk about those a little bit? Yeah. So some of the other op- uh, offerings that I have is a seven day program and it's four days of body work and three days of integration. And it is seven hours of body work, two hours of energy work. So it's a, it's, it's taking two and a half hours of the body work at one time. It is seeing a client for two and a half hours and then sending them home uh, for integration day, seeing them again for another two and a half hours, sending them home for an integration day, coming back for a full body, like the first two and a half hours I work on specific areas. And then the last two hours, I work on the entire body. I send them home for the last integration day. And then on the very seventh, on the very last day, the seventh day, they come back for an hour and a half or two hours of energy work. So this is really an, an intense program, but like I said, you only need to do that once or twice a year. And then I, and then I do some private coaching just for people that are like, where are you? Where are you struggling? It's mostly people that, that like the world doesn't make sense to me anymore. I don't know where to look. I don't know where to go. And I have a, a, a sense of the world. I have a sight that I see where the world's going. And I've seen it since I was really young. Like I remember being four years old and going, this makes zero sense to me. And I remember wow. it's like the first time that fear, that spirit started talking to me in the way of like, don't, don't just seek the truth, right? Don't worry about what's not true, seek the truth. And so my entire life has been about seeking the truth and pulling away from constraints of things that are not true. And yeah. so, yeah, my, and, and so my coaching is about helping people make sense of a world that's lost its mind, right? Or, or not even making sense of a world. We're not trying to make sense of the world that's lost its mind, but making sense of who I am and how I can be. And the, and the going back to the, who am I now, right? Yeah. Now the world looks like cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and who am I and where am I going and what is real? 
What right. is what we need, not what is all those lies that we've been fed and told. So I help people try to right their boat in a stormy ocean. Right. And one of the questions I kind of put like in our draft was, who do you work with? And I know that's a, I know when you, I asked you that before, you're like humans. <laughs> and I love that answer because I think with anything, you're naturally drawn to people that you need to work with or you need to learn lessons from. Like I was drawn to you. I, I loved working with you. I, but have you found over even the last couple of years, there's, I don't know, a niche or certain people that you work with or are drawn to you? Um, I can, I can say there's yes and no. So I do, people say, do you have a niche? I'm like, no, humans, humans are my thing. I love humans more than I love anything <laughs> else on this planet. I want to shake the tar out of them sometimes, but I love them like right. so, so humans, right? How do we human well? Um, and the people that I find that are attracted to the work I do are the people seeking, uh, they're, they're just trying to come out of some kind of confusion, right? Like, this just doesn't work for me anymore. I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing, but you seem to have some guideposts that might be beneficial to me. <laughs> but and at the same time though, you've worked with, I mean, you were saying like working men were coming to you for massages and then you're getting people like me who are like, want to talk to you about all of the woo woo hippie stuff. And so really it's across the spectrum. And I mean, I would say that with whether you're going to a doctor, a lawyer, a energy worker, whoever, if you don't feel comfortable with them and you don't feel attracted to them, you shouldn't be going to see them. Right. I feel kind of that way with anything. So. Yeah. Not all of my work is spiritual work. Um, I mean, it is because this, that who, that's who I am. Right. But yeah, I do have people who are, you know, gentlemen that are tree climbers, uh, arborists and, um, or construction workers or, or things like that. And, and, you know, I tell them, I said, listen, I'm going to change what's happening in your body, but I'm not going to do it like anybody who's coming in and just punching into the flesh to really force it to release. I'm going to unwind it and yeah. I'm going to be in partnership with yes. your body, not in domination with your body. I so that. it's going to feel different and just come in and ha and try it. And then you tell me what you feel like afterwards, because hundred percent of the time people walk out feeling in their words, oh, I feel 30 pounds lighter, or I feel more me than I was before I walked in. Yes. And, and, and that is a privilege that I receive, right? That's, that's mm -hmm. a, it's a privilege for me to be able to be in service of people mm -hmm. like that. I'm not, I'm not here on any kind of hierarchy type of thing. Oh, I'm the healer. Actually, I'm not the healer. You are the healer. Right. I'm actually here in partnership with you, right? We're looking at each other eye to eye and saying, okay, how can I be in service to you? And I love that. Are there tips that you would give people outside of coming to see you for massage, which I would recommend to everybody that you would just give people to live a more aligned life or especially if they're looking to connect within themselves Are there practices that have worked really well for you or just any tips and tricks that you would specifically recommend? Yeah. Stop thinking, stop thinking, stop thinking, stop thinking and start feeling and sensing how right. would how do you describe that because I know you and I have been through that process to be like for me it's really like focusing on my heart like focused on my breathing and then suddenly those thoughts in my brain seem more like bubbles that I can just like I'm aware of them but they're not all consuming to me so that's kind of how I start to talk about like being in my body and less in my head. But how would you describe that experience for yourself? Best thing I can give to people is the pause. Just stop everything yeah. you're doing right now and question what's real for you. Right. Not the way it's always been in the world. Right. Question, stop and say, what else is possible besides this madness? If it feels like madness to you. Yes. Right. Because so life shouldn't feel like madness. No, no. And we shouldn't have to be resilient. Be resi what do I have to be resilient to? Why can't I be in peace and ease and grace? Right. Why am I in pursuit of happiness? I get to be happy no matter what, because it's my choice. I do you feel like it's a balance of, I've been thinking about this, like a balance of the human experience though, because from like the root chakra, like firmly planted on this planet as a human in this tangible body living in this world with all of these stories and things to filter through 
that are very outward focused and then up all the way up our, of course, our energy to our crown chakra where we've got the inner light, the inner knowing. So I feel like the human experience, it really is that dance. And I've had to refine it as dance and not a tackling of looking outwardly. I should look this way. I should eat this way. I should be this way versus realizing that that is very outward and very much fed to me rather than coming in as who I am from a different, from the inner light, right? I think it's that human experience is the constant dance between those two of like, we're always going to be fed this stuff because we're humans on this planet, but we're also, if we choose to connect to our higher power and our inner knowing, we have that source for exactly what you're saying, the being, the slowing down, the, the finding home within your own self. Right. But I think that is the yin and yang that you were talking about before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, and also, as I was mentioning earlier, when we're in earth energy and we're just moved into air energy, we're moving from doing to being. And, and, and right now, I mean, it's those two times are so close. We're December and May, right? There's hardly any time on earth that that has transpired. So I explain it to people like we're walking both sides of the rabbit hole at one time. What has been, has come to a point of such debauchery and untruths in our society, right? That it's, it's like the snake eating its own tail. It will eventually implode. It's wow. uh, the life that we have on this planet right now is unsustainable. We wow. all know it in every part of society from the environment to our own inner environment, to our body, our wellness, our mental wellness, how we speak to each other, that we have a disease of separation. Right. We have a disease that we are all separated when in actuality we are that we are we all make up the matrix. And my energy affects you room and somebody comes in, we're all joyful. And you can tell when you know Debbie Downer comes in or Mr. Anger comes in or Mr. Okay. Anger, whatever, or do, you know, whatever. Anyway. yeah, you can pick up on that energy. Why is that not our story? Then what is I your daily practice to do that? Like, is it I know people I love meditation, I love yoga. I those two really just resonate for me. It's there. What is part of your daily practice to, to do that, to slow down and check yourself out of the worldliness and back into your own? That's a good question. I am a hundred percent always in my life in each and every step walking towards harmony and devotion, right? Like I'm devoted to my experience on this planet as a spiritual energy in a physical form i'm devoted to that actualization where i know that i'm both so i i use this analogy of the cello and the human being right so imagine the cello is the neck of heaven whatever heaven right. is right it's a spiritual ring realm and the body of the cello is earth right okay. so when you're playing a cello the notes that are played happen on the neck or maybe it's a guitar or whatever, because I might get the, the music. I don't know either. <laughs> the, the analogy is the decisions and, of the notes and what's going to be played happens on the neck of the instrument. And then that comes out through the body of it. It's actualized in the body, right? So if we think about the cello being heaven and earth together on one instrument, we become the string, right? Yeah. We become the string where the harmony is plucked. And that plays out, right? It starts with our higher knowing. It starts with our connection to our spirituality. And then it is played out through the body here on earth. And just like any instrument, we can reach up and attune ourselves. Attune, right? Yeah. Find How do you do that though? Because I think, is it like getting out in nature? I know we've talked about it a little bit, but is there something that, because we all get in those moments and where you're, you're having a very worldly, like victim mode, imposter syndrome, whatever it is. And you're like, I have to snap myself out of this. I am hitting the mat. I am going to sit in the trees. I'm going to put my toes in the lake, whatever it is. Do you have just one of those like go-to like, ah, I'm going to go do this. I need a moment to like connect myself to like almost not forced. I hate the word forced, but just that mindful thing where you're like, this is my habit where I'm this is what gets me back on exactly what you're saying into that sensibility. Yeah, for me, it's called Fernan. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. Get outside. 
that lake is mystical. That lake, I have conversations with that lake. I go out to the dock at Lily Pad Bay and the water starts coming towards me and people are like, oh, that's the wind. I'm like, yeah, it's the wind and it's also the lake and whatever, right? Like cool. every yeah. the lake can be, can be smooth and serene and here come the waves. There's no, there's no, that's not a boat. There's not even a duck or a goose around. Yeah. And here comes the little waves and I'm like, oh, come on, lake, come and have a talk with me, right? It's I like my it. church is where I talk to God. It's where I talk yeah. to God in the sense of whatever I am, the energy that I am before I was flesh, right? It's yeah. like, we, we, we are here as the wave on earth, right? We're presenting as the wave, but really the wave's no different. And there's no separation from the ocean if it wasn't for the ocean of all yeah. that is, the wave would not exist, right? There's, they're symbiotic and they're, they're each, each pieces of themselves. Of it, it, it's, it's all one. It just looks like the wave just looks like it's separated from the ocean, but we know it isn't. Yeah, for sure. Oh my gosh, Donna, I could talk to you. I literally could talk to you all day long. I'm like, how, what time is it? Where are we? <laughs> but I want, how do people find you? Uh, I do a lot of things kind of old school in the, in the form of like, I love uh, that. get clients is a word of mouth through my phone number. I can put it in the notes if you sure. prefer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't care. 208-310-2224. Right? Perfect. Caller. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then my email, um, which is howdohumanwell at outlook.com. Okay. And Perfect. I'm on Facebook. I have a, I do have a page where all my stuff is listed and I can give you that for the notes as well. I know you've only been here a year, but even the amount of people, like my mom told me about you, like you and her chatted at the coffee shop and then Jackie told me about you and then Dr. Benita told me about you. And then I feel like a couple other people have, so you might've only been here a year, but I feel like you still are going to have a solid answer to this question as to who are a couple of people locally that inspire you, who you think kind of embody this concept of vibrant living? Yeah, definitely Dr. Benita Hazel. She, yeah, you know, you find your people that feel like doppelgangers. Oh my gosh, you or me. She has a magic way of asking questions. I love that woman, right? And uh, she answers, one of our favorite things to do is just like sit and she answers, ask questions. And I just sit there and go, oh, I have an answer. Oh, that's a great question. Let me think about that a little bit, right? So Benita is, she opens me, right? She, she opens me. And, and then also my friend Aurora Hill, whose studio I'm sitting in right now, she has been a really grounding element for me. And so Benita is younger than I am and Aurora is older than I am. And I feel like there's many people, I mean, my housemate, you know, my housemate, Noelle Laparco, who's a beautiful sommelier and um, restaurant, she, you know, front of house restaurant, like even I am here to learn from everybody, right? I'm, yeah. I'm here. Everybody has something to teach me. Even, even, you know, my four-year-old housemate has something to teach me. <laughs> yes. He totally. me to be playful. Yeah. He reminds me that sometimes we get to stop on the computer and sit down and watch Paw Patrol. Right? <laughs> so, yes. you know, Aurora is my grounding and she sees me and, and she believes in me and she values me. And what and does Aurora believe- do? Aurora is a, is a mystic. She runs a, a business called Gathering Time Ministries. And so okay. she also holds ceremony. She's a coach. Earlier, I was going to say, you know, one of the ways that I help, one of the things I offer to clients is start sensing into the feeling is like what feels like truth to you and what's not truth and then dip away from the truth like the news and television it's not the truth for me so I just say no to that listen to your body and it will become a hard yes or a hard no everything you need to know you just ask your own self in that centered space yeah your central nervous system come to your spine your motherboard right your mother the mothership of our come to your spine your crown your heart and settle and ask yourself what else is possible can i hear my own wisdom because it's right. in there. it's already in there we're already whole and holy right. we just have to let it be yes and let it speak to you yeah. actually listen i love that i mean uh, listen, let it be mother mary whispers words of wisdom right (laughs) we have to quiet down enough as much as you and i are chatting and i love that we at some point when we're seeking what what we need to see or when we're seeking the answers it's it's the quiet place yeah it's that devotion that's i i feel like that's a beautiful way to end let it be seek Mm. the devotion right 
Oh, Donna, thank you so much for joining me today. What a pleasure. Thanks for joining Donna and me. If you couldn't tell from the excitement in my voice, I love this exploration of getting to know and understand our deep selves for life guidance and inner peace. It's only been in the last decade that I've even understood this concept of listening to my inner voice. The external world is so noisy with ideas and expectations of who we should be or could be or would be. <sighs> However, Donna obviously has lots of insights and gifts to support us on this journey. As I continue this journey of discovery and holistic living, I hope you join me as I get to know more awesome, inspiring people in this Inland West region. Please feel free to share, like, and let me know who you'd like to hear from in the future. Sending all the love, light, and vibrancy. Till next time.